Hey everybody, Johnny here. Well, you know, I got such a big response for the people that saw me uh, show my steak that I cooked out on my back lawn that I wanted to try something a little bit different. Now my steak, if you see it right here, turned out so good. It was, it was uh, just piping hot. It was medium rare to medium. It was juicy, it was tasty, it was delicious. So I wanted to try it again. And people were asking me questions, well, how do you do that? Well, we live in Vegas and it gets really hot. And the air temperature is often different than the surface temperature. Surface temperatures, depending on the, the color and what they're made out of, get a lot hotter. So my backyard was so hot I can't walk on it. So I tried to cook a steak and it turned out great. So today I'm gonna cook a whole meal. So I've already uh, washed the potatoes. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cook another steak and I'm gonna add some potatoes and veggies to the side. And I think it's gonna turn out real great. So first up, we're just gonna cut these vegetables all up. And get rid of the seeds. We've got a beautiful green pepper here. Love green peppers. Now it doesn't really matter how big you cut the peppers. I'm just gonna cut them in nice squares. Now, one of the problems I'm gonna have today is that I'm not gonna be here tonight. So if I put it out on my lawn this morning, I won't be able to come and get it until Sunday because I'm gonna be out of town in Amargosa Valley. That's uh, right on Canadian, not Canadian, right on California's doorstep at a place called Long Street Casino. So I've got this great little uh, dish here. I'm just going to put my green peppers in. I'm going to cut up the potatoes and cube a potato. Get rid of some of the bad stuff. Now I love doing this stuff. I love to cook. I spent years in the restaurant business um, starting out as a fry cook at the end of the line and working my way up until I eventually owned a restaurant. Now that's plenty of that. And I got this great looking squash. The squash tastes so good with, uh, with a lot of butter and some seasonings on it. And again, I'm just gonna cut this up into little pieces. The last piece is I got an onion. I like sweet onions. They're great to cook with. They're not too hot. They always are consistently good tasting. Sweet yellow onions. Now I'm actually going to have to go get something to mix this stuff in because it's a little bit too small to fit everything and season it. So I'm going to use this bowl right here and pour them all into the bowl. I'm just gonna mix them around. Suppose I could add my other potatoes. Probably not all gonna fit, but that's okay. So what I'm gonna add to this is I already pre-melted some butter and I'm gonna put some butter right in there. And then some shredded Parmesan cheese. Maybe a little more cheese, I love cheese. Some table grind black pepper. And there's no exact amount that really matters. It's just to taste. Now, this is my favorite. I love getting this stuff, garlic. It's my favorite thing to cook with. And I do a lot of cooking with garlic. So I'm gonna put a nice amount of garlic in there. Now I'm just gonna stir it up and get it all stirred up, get the butter and everything mixed in there really great. So the evener it is to mix, the, the better it's gonna turn out, I think. So now I'm just gonna transfer this over. Now for just one guy, that's actually quite a lot. So I'm gonna put the rest of it in the fridge for later. Okay, 
add a little bit more butter there. Now I'm going to seal this up and move on to the steak, my favorite part. Now I got this steak at Albertsons. It was, I think it was on sale. Um, it was. Looks like a fairly good steak. It's it's only four bucks, four oh nine. But it's a choice beef round tip steak. Now they're not the they're not the uh, tenderest steaks out there. But I saw that this particular one had some pretty good marbling in it, and the marbling really helps the flavor. Now, before I do this, I'm gonna sear this steak to get a really nice golden sear, maybe even a little bit blackened sear on it. But the first thing I need to do is I need to pat it dry. You don't want a wet steak cooking on a hot oil. I'm just gonna pat this dry. Next thing I'm gonna do is gonna go start up the frying pan and I'm gonna put it on really high heat. Now for this, it's really pretty simple. What I'm gonna use is avocado oil, which takes a high heat pretty well. Um, it's really good for you. If you're on a keto diet, this works great. Avocado. Turn my oven on. <clears throat> Get some oil in there. Now, while that is, uh, while that's heating up, I'm gonna season my steak a little bit because I like some of the seasonings almost burnt on the, on the outside. <clears throat> so for this, I'm gonna use more of the garlic. Now, yes, I know that this adds moisture, something that I'm kind of trying to avoid, but that's okay. I really love almost a burnt garlic. Now this looks like a lot, a lot of it's gonna cook down. Get it right in there. I'm gonna sprinkle on some pepper. And a little pink Himalayan sea salt. Really love this stuff. Pepper this side too. Now I think it's hot enough. I'm just gonna place steak in there. And I'm also going to add some of this. I get it from an Amish store back in Minnesota. It's uh, it's minced onion. This stuff cooks up great. It smells great. The aroma is amazing, and it works terrific on a nice high heat. Now again, it looks like there's a lot of stuff on there, and there is, but it will infuse itself into the steak with this slow, slow cooking process that's gonna be done in my van. I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time on either one of the sides. I'm gonna flip them, flip them, flip them. I just wanna get a real high heat. I don't want to uh, get the inside to start to cook. That kind of defeats the slow cooking process. All right, now I'm gonna shut it off. Let it sit there for a minute. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get the steak, while it's still warm, into the film. And make sure to get as much of this as I can onto the steak. And then literally seal it in. Now I want to make sure that it's fully sealed, so I'm going to do it on this other side now too. Because I don't want to get any air into it. Alright, now that's it. Now, it doesn't look like something you're going to get from a fancy restaurant, but let's see how it's going to taste after it's cooked fully. Now I'm going to take the steak and put it on the pan along with my potatoes. And there. That's dinner and I'm sure it's going to be great. But again, we'll find out once we're done. Into the oven, I mean my van. So we're gonna take this out there now. Oh, another beautiful day in Las Vegas. It is really hot. And we're just gonna gently press that in and press bake. 
That's it. Let's see. The outside temperature says 113, but up there, it's actually closer to 7,890 degrees. So it should cook really well. I'm gonna put it over here on the other side of the oven so I can drive safely. And then we'll just see what happens. So I've been driving now for about three minutes. About three minutes and already the pan up in my, my front dash is too hot to touch. That's a good sign. I think we're gonna be great. And uh, I can't wait to try this steak tonight. Well, hey guys, I just finished my first show, uh, a place called Merrill Gardens of the day. Uh, so as of now, this has been sitting in here for about an hour and a half. Uh, I'm gonna check it out. The smell when I got in here was amazing. Ooh, that's, that's actually too hot to touch. Potatoes, they are cooking just nice. Oh, that's hot. Very hot. And a steak. Again, it's just, it's baking in its own juices right now. Um, let's see, it is 114 in here. That's the ambient temperature, so up there it's probably closer to 130, I'm guessing. Um, I'm just hitting that safety zone. So now I gotta go back home, grab a few things, and uh, head on out to Death Valley. So catch up to you in shortly. Well, hey guys, I'm in my hotel now, and uh, we're getting ready to try this stuff out. Now, I needed a towel to bring the, the tray in because it was, it was just so hot. It got up to 118 with the ambient air temperature. I gotta think it's around 130 right on the, the dash. Now, just to show you how hot it got, it actually, it actually bowed this thing out and it melted the plastic. And this is, this, this is a hard plastic lid and it, uh, it warped it a little bit and got so hot. So I'm just gonna put some of this. These are the potatoes and some of the other vegetables on there and it's it's it. ah, yeah, this is steak is hot so I have no idea how this is gonna turn out it might be awful it might be good the first time that I did it I didn't uh, I didn't pre-cook it to sear the outside so this is kind of the first uh, first crack at this this steak and remember, it's just a $4 steak. It wasn't an expensive cut or anything like that. So I think it got so hot, it must have, uh, well, there's still a little pink left in it. it. Must have got almost overcooked. So here's the first bite. Oh man. Cooked right on the dash of my van. Now that is a good steak. Mmm. Let's cut the fat part, the thick part. And there's still a little bit of pink in it, but this is medium to medium well now. It cooks so much. So I guess I can't have it out there. Now, that long. Now let me tell you, don't try this at home. I don't want to get sued. <laughs> so if you're going to do this, you're all on your own. But, um, it turned out great. Just again, a little bit of pink left in the steak. I'm gonna try the potatoes. Mmm. Oh, that's some good eating. So for anybody that has a long drive and 120 degree temperature, I hope you enjoy this. I know I am. Oh, that's perfectly cooked. The, uh, the vegetables, there's still some steam coming off them. The vegetables are like firm and tasty. Oh, that's good. Well, that's it for experiment number two. I have no idea what I'm gonna cook next. Maybe I'll try one of Frank's pizzas. Those decrust pizzas are great. I might try that on my back lawn. So 
Till I see you again, happy eating, everybody.